Today, today is a good day. Today is a really good day. That right there is the GPX 6000 by MindLab. And if you've been following my channel, you know that I've had a lot of success with this machine recently in my area, which is saying something substantial, mostly because we don't really get big nuggety bits in this area. And I've found, I found over 70 of them in the last few months. This video that's about to come out literally in the next little bit, uh, like the next day, is, well, as you can see, I found a lot of gold with that metal detector. That right there, that's some of the gold I've found with it. Please excuse the loud tumbling noises. All of that gold was found using this 11 inch monocoil that comes with the machine. That coil is pretty good, like it, it's obviously worked quite well for me. But there are some major advantages in upgrading your coils. This is the brand new Goldhawk 10x5 monocoil from Coiltech. Coiltech are one of the brands that make aftermarket accessories and pieces such as coils for metal detectors and their goal is to give you more versatility out of the machine and I think it's a really important point to talk about. Now first and foremost I am not a detector head. There are people out there that understand the actual technical aspects of this a lot better than what I do. I'm only going to give you guys the information that I truly understand. I have three different coils here. So we have a big 14 by nine, a nine inch mono, and then we've got the 10 by five mono. Now you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about how size can change depth and all that sort of crap. That's all the stuff I don't truly understand. There's a more important point that I actually wanna talk about, or what I feel is a more important point when it comes to the size of the coil. And it happens in two different ways. This button right here with the straight lines and the squiggly lines is your easy and difficult ground settings. You want to be able to run your machine in easy ground because what that's doing is allowing the machine to run at its maximum sensitivity with the least amount of discrimination for ground noise in it. And that means you can hear deeper targets or smaller targets. When you change to difficult ground, what it's doing is telling the machine, hey, there's a lot of minerals in this ground and it's going to give us false signals. So we need to ignore those sounds a lot more. And so the machine ignores them. The problem is that when it ignores those sounds, it's also ignoring sounds that are very faint that could potentially be deep pieces of gold or very small pieces of gold. Not that this machine seems to have any difficulty in picking up really small gold. Like, I'm blown away. It's, like, just as sensitive as a gold monster, if not more. Anyway, my point is that I'm having to run my machine in difficult ground most of the time because I am getting so many false signals with the amount of heavy mineralization that's in the ground. And that's where a change in coil comes in. This coil is like a third of the size of the standard coil that comes with it. That means there's less ground underneath it. And that means less minerals, which means less false signals. And less false signals means that I can run it in easy ground. I don't have to run it in difficult ground. Meaning that I can hear the targets. That means I can hear the really small ones. So people are gonna say that this coil is more sensitive. It's not necessarily more sensitive. It just means that you can hear the targets because you're not having to run the discrimination so high. And the second advantage is just simple geometry. I can fit that into tighter spaces. I can fit that under trees and in bushes and around small gaps and things like that where I can't fit the big round monocoil that comes with it. And that means I can cover more of the ground that I'm walking over. A big coil like this is a fantastic option if you're working in an area that is, say, open, clear, and maybe relatively flat because it's gonna cover more ground for you and that shape, that point at the nose, is still gonna allow you to shove it into those corners. But where I'm at, it's, it's always a hill. It's always on a hill. It's always stupidly steep and there's a lot of bushfire debris everywhere and it makes for very difficult detecting with a big round coil. Today's plan is to go into the bush with that and see if I can't find any gold, but that will be a video that comes on to Vogus Prospecting if I do find any gold. And the very next video that's literally going to go up in the next couple of hours on Vogus Prospecting is me finding over 22 gold nuggets 
using this machine. And I hope you guys will check that out because I literally, it's the biggest gold way up I've ever done on Vogus Prospecting. I can't wait to show people. All right, hopefully that was informative. I know that I do not have all of the technical stuff. Like I said, there are heaps of people that are way better, way more skilled and way more knowledgeable than I about this sort of stuff. I'm still basically learning it. But that is the most important thing I know about changing your coils and why it might be an interesting idea for you to do it, especially if you run a machine like a Gold Monster. Gold Monster's big coil and small coil pretty much give you the same depth. They pretty much give you the same sensitivity. The difference is the small coil is far less reactive. It, may, it doesn't make nearly as much chatter on the machine. All right, on that note, guys, give your dog a scratch behind the ears. So peace, and I'm out.